So first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for uh, uh, giving me the opportunity to uh, talk in this uh, nice uh, conference. Today I will talk about uh, 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 a very recent work done jointly with Franck uh, Merle. Okay. So uh, let me first start with the equation. We have the semilinear wave equation in two space dimensions. So here, <coughs> the nonlinearity is u to the p, where p is subconformal, and the subconform the conformal exponent is less than the Sobolev e exponent. So here, p is less than five because most of the time I will be in two dimensions. Of course, I will talk first about the one-dimensional case, which is very well understood, but then I will focus on the 2D uh, 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 case. We had, as far as blow-up is concerned, we had many, many works before, so uh, many people in this uh, room, conference room, have already worked on this uh, equation, so <coughs> I cite uh, some of them and I apologize for those who I might have uh, for forgotten. Okay. Now, I will f uh, not consider global in time solutions, but only solutions which are not, uh, w which exist up to some uh, time, here t bar, okay. But then, from the finite speed of propagation, the solution may stop of existing at this minimal <coughs> existing time, and then it continues to exist somewhere else, up to some surface, which is a graph, x gives capital T of x, okay, which is a kind of local blow-up time. And from the finite speed of propagation, this graph is already one Lipschitz. Why? Because my domain of definition is simply a union of backward light cones. So a union of backward light cones is either the whole half space T positive or the subgraph of a one Lipschitz function. All this comes directly from the Cauchy theory, which we do in H1 uh, times L2, by the way, because we are Sobolev subcritical anyway. Okay, so you see, as I said, if you take any point on this surface, the backward light cone with vertex x, t of x, is included in the domain of definition. Then, we will give a geometric definition. If you can change the slope of your light cone, which is in blue here, and make a green cone with uh, a slope which is strictly less than one, and still stay in the domain of definition, we will say that we have a non-characteristic point. Their set will be called script R. All the other points will be called characteristic points and their set will be called S. S like singular, because in fact the solution blows up everywhere, you see? Okay, so you are either non-characteristic or characteristic. And in fact the characteristic points will be the nasty ones where we, you will have a more complicated behavior. Now I start with the case N equals 1. First thing, any blow-up solution has a non-characteristic point. Why? Because you always take the minimum, the minimal time, the place where you have the minimal uh, time, and then you will see that, of course, you can have even a flat cone with slope zero if you want. Of course, I take uh, initial data for this in H1 log uniform times L2 log uniform, meaning that the L2 norm on every wall with uh, uh, radius 1 is uniformly bounded. So you have always your solution which is defined in a strip. At least, okay, your domain of definition contains a strip, so you have a minimal time and uh, there you have a non-characteristic point. But then, this is for free, if I can say. Which we, we, what is difficult to have is to have a solution with a characteristic point. And this was an open problem <coughs> until some years ago when we solved that with Franck Merle with this small example. Take initial data, which is odd, okay? And then with large plateaus here and here, 
So from the finite speed of propagation, it will stay constant and dependent of x in a smaller plateau, uh, in a smaller uh, interval of, okay, of space. So here you can solve it like the ODE. You know that it will blow up. You can see that it blows up. The ODE is explicit. Okay, so this is not a global solution. It's uh, uh, a non-global solution which will blow up, okay? And then because it's initially odd, it will stay odd all the time. So u of zero will be always equal to zero and we will have a characteristic point at the origin. And by the way, having characteristic points is connected to sign changing, in fact as we will see this in a moment. An important property in one space dimension, this uh, solution is stable, meaning that you may perturb it and breaking the symmetry and still have a, non -character a characteristic point in the middle, close to zero, not necessarily at zero, but close to zero. Okay, so this is a robust property, having a characteristic point with one change of sign <coughs> is stable with respect to initial data. Okay, so this is the picture in one space dimension with the existence of non-characteristic points, which is free, and then having a characteristic point. This is something more difficult. Now, I would like to move to the asymptotic behavior near blow-up points. So, we will have two <coughs> kinds of behaviors near non-characteristic points and near characteristic points. To see in a nice way the behavior, it's useful to introduce similarity variables. So here we have a new uh, function, new space variable, new time variable. L let me start with time. Time is simply a slow time, okay? S equals negative log of capital T of x0 minus t, going to infinity as t goes to capital T minus x0. Why? is a zoom near the singularity and this zoom is in the wave style meaning that we have x minus x0 to the power 1 and t capital T minus t to the power 1 unlike the heat equation where as you may know we have a square root here because space and time do not uh, play the same role and then for the new function we simply divide u by the rate of the ODE so the question we are asking can we compare the growth of the solution of the PDE to the growth of, uh, of the ODE, which is explicit, which is known. Okay? Then, I'm not writing the equation satisfied by W, but of course, doing some algebra, we can, we can have it, and we are working mostly in the W variable, but here just to illustrate the blow-up behavior. I'm just saying that if you write this uh, PDE, you will find a class of uh, trivial solutions, these trivial solutions in the u variable are exactly self-similar blow-up solutions. They give you exactly self-similar blow-up solutions. When d is equal to zero, you have the ODE solution. When d is non-zero, it's just moving the ODE solution with the Lorentz transform. Okay? Now, if x0 is non-characteristic, then wx0 has a profile. And that profile is this guy. Because this family is the only, fam the, the only possibility for having stationary solution in W. We have a Lyapunov functional in W, okay, decreasing energy, so this helps us to have a limit, a limit where the set to, to the set of uh, stationary solutions, and this set is completely characterized. You have zero or this family with plus and minus. Now, if you have a characteristic point, as I have already told you, this is the nasty case. So here, and I'm making connection with the talk of Patrick, we have multi-solitons, okay? So look here, you have this kind, this uh, family, but the parameter is moving. And we will see uh, that two neighbors have opposite signs, okay? And this parameter which is moving is explicitly given by this formula. So just to, to, uh, to, to give you the result, you will see some parameters going to 1, others going to negative 1, and if you have uh, an odd number of solitons, 
the middle solitons, soliton will not move. Okay. All these modalities, in particular the multi-solitons, do occur. We were able with Raphael code to construct a solution for any k, we have a solution which behaves like that. But of course, it's better to have a picture. And let me here make a picture for you when k equals 4. If you have four solitons, it's nice to further change uh, the variables because let me go back a little bit. Here, if x and t is in your light code with vertex x0, t of x0, then y is in the unit pole. Okay? Now, I will make a further change of variable. y equals hyperbolic tangent of x, so x is in r. Y is still in the unit ball, okay, negative 1, 1, okay, and I multiply W by this rate, and here, miracle, you see the KDV solitons. So your W bar is decomposing into a sum of alternate uh, KDV solitons, okay, and you see that two neighbors have opposite signs, and the two of the left will go to the left, and the two on the right will go to the right, okay? If you have an odd number of solitons, then the middle soliton would stay in the middle. Okay, uh, what else to be said here? Of course, the middle of the soliton is given completely sharply. We have an explicit formula for, for that. It moves like log of S, which makes log of log of capital T minus T, in fact. This is the motion of the the center of the soliton. And, in fact, as Patrick said before, there are many, many connections between the two talks, the center of the solitons obey some kind of orthogonality uh, condition, and that orthogonality condition uh, gives us the ODE satisfied by the center of the solitons. And this ODE, as you see here, is uh, may be familiar to some of you. This is not the TODA system, because the TODA system comes with yeah. double derivative here, second derivative for zeta i. Here we have only one. Somehow it's maybe easier to, to handle, but not that much. <laughs> okay. Uh, and of course we have this uh, kind of uh, small terms which come here, simply because our equation is not linear equation. So if you have, let me go back here, this guy is a solution, but a sum of the sum of, uh, of solitons is not a solution. And because it's not a solution, we have some defect, and that defect is proportional to the small uh, uh, terms, and this gives us the law. Then you see that we have an explicit family which is given here just to, to uh, uh, check that we have this family is completely easy. Now, we have already talked about the behavior of the solution. If you are at a non-characteristic point, you have one soliton with a parameter that does not move. If you, have, you are at a characteristic point, then you have a sum of uh, two or more uh, solitons. Now, what about the regularity of the blow-up curve? They are connected, in fact. You cannot have one before the other. Asymptotic behavior and the, uh, the regularity of the blow-up set has to be somehow advanced side by side. But here I am just giving you the results. So R, the set of non-characteristic points, is open. And T is C1 there. Okay? And then, if you know that W approaches capital, uh, kappa of d of x0, then this d of x0 is the derivative of t. You see how asymptotic behavior and regularity are linked. Now, S, the set of characteristic points, is finite on compact sets. And near each A in S, your blow-up curve here in dashed line is uh, tangent to the backward light cone, so it has a corner with 90 degrees, okay? And it's not differentiable, so we have half a derivative 
from the right, from the left, which is one, and from the right, which is negative one. Okay, and as I told you, every uh, characteristic point is isolated. Then we can have a further expansion of the difference between t and the equation of the backward light cone. It's given here, so it has uh, a log correction, and in the log correction, you see the number of solitons. Okay? Once again, the regularity is linked to the asymptotic behavior. You can see it. Okay? So, uh, then, usually, it's not symmetric. This is really something uh, strange, because usually when we find blow-up profiles, uh, we will find a profile which is somehow uh, 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 symmetric. But here the first part is symmetric, okay? But the second part is by no means symmetric. Why? Because here in this solution, this zeta i, they are invariant with translation in zeta i. So you can change zeta i, make their barycenter different. The barycenter is conserved, the center of mass is conserved here. So if you take a center of mass which is zero, then this guy is symmetric. If you take a center of mass here which is not zero, then this correction is not symmetric with respect to x zero. Okay, I think that I said everything. Okay, so I can move to the next slide. Okay, I also see time running. We have some generalizations, which, well, I would say easy generalization because of what will come later, but at that time this was not that easy. Well, anyway, you can add some lower order terms, f of u, where f of u is less than u to the power q with q less than p, and even some terms involving derivatives in time, in space, x and t, as far as the, their growth does not exceed this. So here we cannot put other power, the maximum power here is 1, Unfortunately, we could not uh, fill the gap to what the scaling would give us, okay? So here, everything is true for this kind of equations. Second case, if you take radial equation, okay, but outside the origin. If you are outside the origin, this term will be of lower order, okay? So you can handle it as we did here, and everything is like the 1D case. For example, if you have, but of course we have radial symmetry, so if you have a characteristic point, the whole sphere will be characteristic, okay, etc. Then you can maybe make a mixture of both cases, radial with perturbation. This is possible, but still outside the origin. You can also take the, uh, the complex case, and even the, uh, this is very recent contribution by my former student, Azayez, uh, you can take u in r to the power m and have generalizations, at least for non-characteristic case. And even with strong perturbations, going up to u to the p, divided by log of u to some power a, and this was done by Amza and Saidi. Okay. Then what happens when n is more than 2? Which is, of course, the topic of my uh, talk here. So it's high time for me to start talking about n more than 2. The first result is completely general. No symmetry, no hypothesis. It's about the blow-up rate. So you define w, the similarity var variable version. As I told you, we define the, the similarity variable uh, version like that by dividing u by the rate of the ODE solution. So we are asking whether w will be bounded, which means that we will have ODE rate. Okay? So this is true. Okay? Near non-characteristic points and we, and of course sharp also from the solution of the, uh, sol uh, uh, the equation in H1 times L2. Okay, and the finite speed of propagation, we have a lower bound. At characteristic points, we have the same uh, bound from above, but with some weights, so we, we remove the, uh, the weights by uh, considering only balls of radius one half. And then, 
after that, for as far as classification is concerned, we don't have a lot of results. But let me concentrate on characteristic points, because in fact, characteristic points is my aim in this uh, uh, talk, although it doesn't appear in the title, but you will see it in this pyramid soon. Okay. So here we have no classification of characteristic points. In 1D, we said that every characteristic point is isolated. Here, no result. Okay? And also for construction, for examples. If you ask me, can you construct a solution with characteristic point? Then I tell you, well, I can take a 1D solution and then make some truncations. And in some place where the solution will be rigorously 1D, I will see, for example, a solution which is in 2D blow, uh, having a line of characteristic point, because in 1D it's just one point. Okay? Or if I am making truncations with uh, a radial solution, then I will see a, a, a characteristic set which is a sphere, for example. But this is always rigorously 1D behavior. And that's it. We, know, we have no other examples. So the questions, when we started with Franck to do this, is can we find new blow-up solutions with characteristic points with a non-1D behavior? That was the challenge. And let me here stop a little bit and, ask, and talk about, about a general question, the geometry of the set of the singular points. So our dream with Franck two years ago, a year and a half ago, was to find a solution where S is cross-shaped. For example, in 2D, you take the axis, x1 equals 0, x2 equals 0. Can we have a solution where locally near the origin, this, the set of characteristic points is equal to the axis? That was our uh, aim at first. But I will tell you if this is true or not in a, in a minute. So please wait a little bit. But more generally, the geometry of the singular set is... For me, at least, it's a problem which is largely open. And for the case of the semilinear heat equation, which is probably the easiest case of PDE having blow up, there are the, the, the question is largely open, as you will see. But I'm not sure if many people are aware that this, this question is completely open. Look, here, uh, you can construct, you have examples where the blow up set. And let me just say something that for the heat equation, we have only one blow up time, mm -hmm. capital T. After that, the solution does not exist. So at capital T, we have two kinds of points, blow up points where the solution goes to infinity and the regular points where the solution is bounded. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I will concentrate on the set of blow up solution, uh, blow up points, in fact, I don't have characteristic or non-characteristic, only blow-up points. We, I, we can have solutions where the singular set is only one point, or a finite number of points. You can choose them, okay? Or a sphere, or a finite number of concentric uh, spheres, and you can choose them, and that's it. For example, in 2D, we don't have, we don't know if we have a solution which may blow up on an ellipse. Open problem. Can we have a cross in 2D? Open problem. Can we have a segment? Open problem, etc. Can you imagine any other uh, geometry? And we, we don't have an answer. And the same question, of course, somehow exists for the similar wave equation, semilinear wave equation. But for the similar wave equation, we have to change a little bit the definition of singular set. Because here, all points are blower points, but at later times, so here, the good notion for the singular is the notion of characteristic points. Because near non-characteristic points, the situation is, at least in one space dimension, completely easy. We have a profile where T is C1, etc. So here, the corresponding uh, question would be, can we have, for example, a solution where the set of characteristic points is a cross? That was our initial thought. And this is the theorem. Well, we could not answer. 
the question, but at least we had, we came out with a new type of, uh, a, new, a new solution. So we have a solution in 2D, which blows up on one Lipschitz graph, which is pyramid shaped. And let me show you here the picture. Thank you, Frank. Okay, so you can see, yes, the picture is here. Okay, so Tx is T0 minus maximum of x1 minus x2. Mm -hmm. Maximum x1 minus x2 is like the pyramid of Egypt. Okay, you see? So something like that. <coughs> so if you see uh, uh, in the direction of the axis x1, okay, if you restrict yourself only to, uh, to, to this uh, direction x1, you take x2 equals 0, you will see the corner with 90 degrees, like in one space dimension. Same thing with x2, okay, when x1 is equal to 0. But along the bisectrice, you will see another uh, angle, okay, which, I d <laughs> well, you, you will have a slope of 1 over square root of 2, in fact, because this is the pyramid, okay? We have exactly the geometry of the, of the pyramid. So this is local near, near 0. And let me make some remarks. First of all, u x of t is, of course, non-radial, because we have a pyramid. Pyramid is not radial, okay? Th second thing, my solution, we construct that as being symmetric with respect to the axis, and anti-symmetric with respect to bisectrices, which means that u will remain always rigorously zero on bisectrices. Okay? And the surprising result is that only zero is the characteristic point. All other points are non-characteristic. And let me tell you about something which is counterintuitive in some sense, because in one space dimension, we, we have uh, noticed that uh, the change of sign or being zero is linked to having a characteristic point. So here on the bisectrice, our solution is always zero, but we have a non-characteristic point. So this is something co which is completely different from the 1D situation. So only the origin is uh, uh, a characteristic point. So here, in fact, this result we proved only in locally, okay, because we were somehow lazy, but we, we are able to say that all the other points, even far in space, are non-characteristic. This is possible, though somehow technical. Now let me talk about the regularity of the blow-up graph. I will simply say, okay, that the regularity is the same as the regularity of the pyramid, okay? So the pyramid, you see here, sorry, what happens? Okay, I will, no, no, no problem, I can do it. Okay. So you see here, your pyramid is regular everywhere except at the origin and on bisectrices. Same for my blow-up graph. We are, we are C1 everywhere, except on the bisectrices, okay? So if we are outside the bisectrices, from symmetries, it's enough to consider the case where 0 is less than x2, strictly less than x1. Here, look at your derivatives. Your derivative is like the derivative of the pyramid, negative 1, but with logarithmic correction, like what we had in one space dimension, in fact, okay, and this is almost zero, in fact, the, the derivative in the other uh, direction. Now, on the bisectrices outside the origin, you have directional derivatives in all directions, except in the direction of the uh, bisectrices, bi bisectrix, and this is like uh, the pyramid, in fact, uh, but at the origin, you have directional derivatives, except once again, along the derivative, uh, the, the bisectrices, okay? And let me insist on something here, unlike the 1D, we have on the bisectrices the first example of non-characteristic points where T is non-differentiable. Because in 1D, if you are 
at non-characteristic points, then you are differentiable. And at characteristic points, you have a corner of 90 degrees. Here, we still have a corner uh, at the characteristic point, which, which is the origin, but on the, on the bisector series, we have non-characteristic points and T, which is not uh, uh, differentiable. Okay. Okay. Now, what about the behavior? So, at the origin, you remember this change of variable, it's always centered at the point where you want to see the behavior. Okay, so wh when I talk about W0, this means that I'm working in the backward light cone with vertex 0, T of 0. Here I will see four solitons. Two along the X1 uh, uh, direction, one going to the right, this one, and one going to the left, they are symmetric, okay? And two along the x2 direction, they are also symmetric, and we, we see the anti-symmetry. So this means that if you draw a circle, which is the section of your backward light cone with vertex 0, t0, you will see, if you go clockwise, for example, you have positive, negative, positive, negative, okay? If you encounter all the axes. Okay, once again, we have this kind of uh, sign uh, change, in fact, like in the 1D situation. Here, the solitons are always the same, okay? And then the parameter is, once again, completely explicit, and it satisfies the same kind of ODE, which is connected to the TODA system, here because of uh, symmetry, so we have only one, one center to, to, to deal with. If we had here D1, D2, D3, D4, we would have something involving Zeta1, Zeta2, and Zeta4. Okay, uh, then, well, uh, what I would say is that D, D bar, is negative 1 plus some correction here, which is a logarithmic correction because S is negative log of capital T minus T. And you see that D goes to negative 1 and negative D goes to, one, to 1 which give you the slopes of your pyramid. So this is for W sub zero. What happens outside the origin? So if X zero is outside the origin, as I told you, we have non-characteristic points. And here we have a convergence to, a new, to stationary solutions. Okay? And we have two cases. If we are outside the bisectrices, then we will converge, like in the 1D situation, to this special soliton, the same one, okay? And its slope is given by negative 1 plus this uh, logarithmic correction. So we are not rigorously equal to the pyramid, but we have a correction to the pyramid, which is given like that. Of course, this is given just here, but if you change by symmetry, you can find the behavior everywhere outside the bisectrices. And now, if you are on, the bis uh, on one of the bisectrices, then you will find a new uh, blow up, uh, a new stationary solution, which is, not, uh, which is not radial, okay? Which is anti-symmetric, which is odd. In f uh, well, s which is anti-symmetric with respect to the bisectrices, okay? So, yes, in a higher space dimension, the kappa d is not the only uh, uh, possibility for the set of stationary solutions. We have a new set. We are not able to characterize everything, but we found a new stationary solution. Okay. Then the proof. This is maybe the most hard part of the proof. I should have started with the proof because at, at, uh, at first you are maybe it's easier to, to, to follow, but at the end, uh, well, it's, uh, it's more difficult. But of course, the results are more important to state anyway. We have two major steps. First step, the construction in the light cone. You have finite speed of propagation. So <coughs> it's completely meaningful to start with initial data in the section of 
a backward light cone and to follow it only in the backward light cone. And after that comes step two where we will find the behavior okay, outside the origin. So here we make a construction with prescribed behavior okay, in the light cone and then we, we find the, the, the regularity. Between the two steps, there is a small step which is not uh, very long, but uh, while we need to use the finite speed of propagation and extend our initial data outside the section of the uh, light cone in order to have something which is defined, hopefully, everywhere in space. So, in fact, our initial data is defined in an initial, is complex, uh, compactly supported and defined in a square. And the square is suitable to the geometry of the pyramid, in fact. Okay? And it is really uh, uh, defined in a set, uh, supported in a set which is strictly larger than the section of the light cone. Okay? And as I told already for the 1D case, the asymptotic behavior and the regularity of blow-up set are completely linked and advanced side by side in the, in the proof. Okay, let me now go to the <coughs> first step. As I told you, we are working only in the light cone, which means that when I introduce W, I will work only in the unit ball. Y is in the unit ball, okay? So, we are able, so this is the goal, find a solution in W which obeys this behavior, okay? So we see our solitons, as I stated before, in the, in the theorem. Okay, so two solitons which are symmetric in the x1 behavior, two solitons symmetric in the x2 behavior, and we have anti-symmetry with respect to bisectrices. Okay, and I give you all other characterization of the parameter d of s is completely explicit. So this is my goal. Okay, the framework is the construction of a solution for PDE with prescribed behavior. Okay, the method. Well, you linearize the equation around the intended behavior and we find three regions in the spectrum. Negative spectrum. And this is controlled thanks to a linearized version of the Lyapunov functional. Because in W we have a Lyapunov functional for the whole system, the nonlinear. So even for the linearized <coughs> equation, you have a Lyapunov functional and this helps you to control all the negative uh, part of the spectrum. We do not compute uh, any eigenvalue explicitly in the negative uh, range. Then we have lambda equals zero, which is controlled thanks to modulation in the parameter d of the solitons. Remember that this d parameter is in fact uh, the parameter of the Lorentz transform, which operates on the ODE solution in the UXT setting. So we change it a little bit to kill the projection on lambda equals zero. Lambda equals one and not negative one. Sorry for the mistake. Okay, lambda equals one. We, it's controlled and killed, in fact, thanks to modulation with respect to this parameter, nu, in this family. So this family, when nu is zero, you have your solitons. Take your soliton, kappa of d and y, then go back to u x t, and then again to W, but with a different time. You find this family. Okay? And of course, this construction is inspired by the construction we did with Raphael Cote for multi solitons in one space dimension. Okay. Then, let me give you a history of the construction with prescribed behavior. Well, Again, uh, sorry, I'm sure I, I forget some, some people and um, probably some recent work, but it was possible to, to use these ideas, NLS, KDV, waterways, Schrodinger maps, uh, Ginsburg, Landau, Keller, Siegel, wave, heat, Schrodinger maps with many, many people, which I cite here. Okay, now I move to step two. The behavior of W x zero, okay, and the regularity of T of x zero when x zero is outside the origin. <coughs> Let me suggest the following. You take x zero, 
Okay. And then, if you want to know the behavior of Wx0, which is e completely equivalent to knowing the behavior of Uxt in the backward light, light cone with vertex x0, t of x0, in this case, you just remark when x0 is small, the sections of the cone with vertex x0, t of x0, and the cone with vertex 0, t of x0, are almost the same when we, you are far from the, uh, the singularity. Okay? So far from the singularity, you can start from wx0, go back to u, and from u, go to w0. And you will find that wx0 and w0 are linked with this nice algebraic identity. Okay? So this is completely explicit. Since W0 has four solitons, Wx0, far from the singularity, will also have four solitons, but with a deformation. Because you see, we are multiplying W0 with this factor. And the four solitons for Wx0, in fact, involve this kappa tilde, kappa star, this family. Okay? So we have these four generalized solitons with a deformation. When I say deformation, because we have this factor, which means that here we have a new which is not zero. Okay? And then what we will do with some dynamics, we will follow these four solitons and we will see that two will disappear because if I go here, when nu is positive, because nu is mu e to the power s, is mu is positive, s going to infinity, okay, all this will go to zero. So two will disappear, and then I will have only two solitons, and in some cases only one solid. And we need uh, uh, strong analysis here, and the strong analysis is the following. If you start with four solitons which are decoupled, which do not see each other, you can follow them for a long time, okay? And you see if someone would go to zero or would go to infinity or stay close to kappa of d. Okay, then if we are not on the bisectrices, say in this range, then we will be left with only one solid. Okay, at some point, S star, such that S star is like negative log of X1. So if X1 is close to zero, we will have to wait a long time until making the three solitons disappear and having only one. If you are far from X1, then, well, this would happen rather quickly. Okay? And then we have a trapping result, okay? Which we first pro proved in one space dimension and then in any dimension for subconformal exponent, if you are close to this family, then you would converge to a member of that family. And, of course, when you converge, the parameter here is the gradient of t, and it is close to this, uh, this parameter. So we have some analysis to make our solution close to one soliton, and once it is close to one soliton, it's trapped. It would converge to one soliton. And then, since the gradient is like this parameter, <coughs> it gives us directly the gradient of, of t at this point. Here, I forgot something important. This is done only at non-characteristic points, because our trapping result works only at non-characteristic points. So here, I'm outside the bisectrices, Okay, if I am non-characteristic, then I know the gradient and I have convergence. But then, at some point later in the proof, I will have to show that all points outside the bisectrices are indeed non-characteristic. And this is difficult. For the moment, I don't have it. Okay, and th this will be an important uh, step. Note once again, the link between the asymptotic behavior of Wx0 and the regularity. You see it here. We converge to something where we see the gradient. Okay? Now, case two, if we are on the bisectrices, the situation, the solution is anti-symmetric. So, you cannot have only one solid. 
always all that you can do is have only two solitons so you will have two solitons which will decrease to zero and you are left with two solitons like that one along x1 and the other along x2 and the parameter is almost the same in fact okay and here because we have a non-characteristic point okay and this comes from the behavior of the neighbors you are on a bisectress but you have neighbors which are not on the bisectresses and there you know the gradient so from that you can have the gradient or at least directional derivatives outside the direction of the bisectress and see that you have you are non-characteristic then because we have a Lyapunov functional in similarity variables we will converge to a solution which will be close to this uh, guy so we have a new kind of stationary solution which are neither radial nor when 1d okay a new kind of uh, stationary solution now we are left with only one thing to show that outside the bisectrices all the points are non-characteristic okay so in fact this is what i wanted to call the umbrella technique okay maybe it's suitable for today because it's going to rain okay but let me let me tell you what i call the umbrella look here in the domain of definition in 1d but in multi d you just take the cone okay any blue cone with slope one okay a uh, uh, light cone is completely included in the domain of definition with vertex x t of x here but then if you take an umbrella which is green and you start from the bottom you imagine your green umbrella is going up okay and then it uh, touches the your blow up graph at some point then that point is for sure a non-characteristic point okay take your umbrella and touch every in every place the first time when your umbrella or your cone non-characteristic with a slope which is strictly less than one touches your graph that point is by definition a non-characteristic you see it okay <laughs> that, that's not more complicated than that so here this is what i will do sorry i will get back to the same place okay take x outside the bisectrices for example here x2 is strictly less than x1 and we will show that x is non-characteristic we take a gamma which is rather small between 0 and x1 square smaller than the log the log correction because our slopes are all negative 1 or 1 with the log correction so x1 square is much faster than 1 over log of x1 okay and we consider a family of cones with vertex centered in x and height t t is a parameter and the slope is always one minus gamma so this is an umbrella it's coming from the bottom the green umbrella and going up at some point for some v value of t it will touch the graph at some point x bar t of x bar immediately x bar is non-characteristic because of this uh, slope which is strictly less than one if x bar is equal to x because maybe the, uh, the umbrella will touch the graph at its top if this happens then we are done x is non-characteristic if it does not happen if it touches elsewhere we will try to find a contradiction okay so let's see imagine that the touching point is not the center of all these codes okay if x bar is on the bisectrices well this is a little bit complicated i'm sorry i don't want to to mention that at all okay maybe later if you are interested or in the paper okay but now when x bar is on the is not on the bisectrices the argument is in fact easy let's see 
imagine that x bar is also by, by symmetry here so it has positive coordinates okay so in this place both the cone in x bar and the graph are differentiable the cone is differentiable because we are not at the center of course but the graph is differentiable because we have a non-characteristic point x by bar by construction is non-characteristic imagine two surfaces which teach which touch each other okay at some point so there th they should share the same tangent plane okay so their gradient has to be the same okay their slopes have to agree okay so the slope of the cone is this guy which is less than this one and the slope of the graph is this guy and you see log of x1 bar is less than x1 square because the parameter comes from the x the point where i uh, i'm starting and the slope comes from the touching point x bar so all this means that x x1 bar is negligible with respect to x1 okay this is on one hand on the other hand okay i have a series of three uh, uh, inequalities which are easy to to understand hopefully t of x is less it's more than t of x bar because t of x is uh, because the, the cone is under the uh, the graph in fact okay t of x is more than the uh, the top of the cone and the top of the cone is more than t of x bar this is one thing second thing t is one Lipschitz so t x bar is more than t of zero means x bar but since we are here it's more than x x one bar square root of two then because w x is bounded b thanks to our work in 2003 2005 we have the following upper bound which is not sharp t of x is in fact always less than t of zero minus x one x1 over 2 and now let's put all these three inequalities all together if you put them this is more than this more than this more than this so you find that x1 okay is less than 2x1 bar but from the previous slide x1 bar was negligible with respect to x1 a contradiction okay now all points outside the bisectrices are non-characteristic and we have the gradient which is the slope of the pyramid negative one in this region with a, lo uh, a logarithmic correction okay then we when we integrate this estimate between zero and x we will find that tx minus t0 is le like negative x1 with a logarithmic correction and of course by symmetry we find all the pyramid shape like that okay thank you for your attention so if you take the bicitrix and you get a Lorentz boost so it's horizontal in what way does it differ from the 1d blow up shape behavior. Sorry, can, can you say it again? I, t I take it by Citrix yes. and Lorentz boost it so it's horizontal. Ah, yes. Okay. Right. Yes. Excuse me, think that. Then how does that deviate from the 1D behavior which blows up also along a line? Uh, it's a different profile. Yes, it's, it's a different uh, stationary solution. Because on the, on the bisectrix, we don't have ca ca kappa of D, we don't have the usual solitons we have convergence to a new stationary solution. So even if you change with Lorentz transform, you will find, yes, th this is good. Yes, we can, we can make that, like, the, uh, like you are saying. We'll find a, a new type of non-characteristic point where the profile is not the soliton in 1D. Very good remark. Yes, a new profile. And how do I see the deviate? I mean, what does it look like that makes it look different? I mean, other than let me show you. It's here. Okay, let me do it's here. You see, 
And Frank can, can do a picture, of course. <laughs> so if you, if you see it like that, then it would be uh, with a different slope. One minus delta, one minus delta or plus delta. But it would be wider, different. Wider than the characteristic, uh, I mean, in 1D, you, you either have slope which is rigorously 1, or we have something which is differentiable. And here we don't have something which is dis differentiable, but two slopes which are, which are far, far from, from 1. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.